2019 in January when I'm going to make it my goal to get my podcast to number one in the UK. Mm-hmm. Did that within six months, which led me to launch my podcast agency, Podpreneur. Alex is, you know, one of the early pioneers of podcasting in the UK. Uh, screw it, just do it. But everybody and their mom wants a podcast nowadays. The people starting out, I always say, have a 100-day list. You've got to reach yeah. out to those immediate connections, first connections of yours. Do you see patterns, of, you know, what, what makes folks successful? 24, 25% of people only have a never even a I fancy my chances because I'll, I'll just keep going. Hello and welcome back to Rocket Pod. On today's show, we're delighted to be joined by Alex Chisnell. Alex is a podpreneur and actually the host of the UK's number one podcast, or certainly held that slot for many years. Um, screw it, just do it. I, yeah, excited to kind of delve into what it takes to to run a successful podcast. Um, obviously, it's uh, it's kind of probably a bit be interested for him to having the cameras turned as he's usually doing the interviews yeah. um, but no we're, we're really delighted to have you on Alex if you're really into podcasts you're interested in what we do and it is something that you're thinking maybe that's what you want to go into this episode really is for you we dive into how to start acting on your ideas on your podcast how to how to start growing it useful tips yeah useful tips and advice that that Alex has it's all in this little packaged episode so yeah let's get stuck in absolutely welcome alex alex welcome to rocket pod pleasure to be here thank you for inviting me oh you're welcome so you you got up pretty early this morning to get down so we're, we're actually, actually meeting quite early i mean i mean it's uh was it nine nine thirty ish yeah um, but you've come away from bournemouth yeah but it, it's it's a nice journey through the new forest pretty relaxing so um i don't mind it at all yeah yeah so alex uh, so for our listeners alex and i've been talking about three years i think um okay. and we were first connected by a mutual friend, Tara Panshod, um, and um, she said, you've got to meet Alex. Um, and then three years later, here we are. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Alex is, you know, one of the early pioneers of podcasting in the UK. Uh, screw it, just do it. Correct. And it's been very successful and um, also runs its own podcast agency, helping other podcasters, um, you know, get into the business. Um, so I think, um, why don't we start with what are you working on right now? Um, and uh, yeah, what are you working on right now? So definitely my own podcast, Screw It, Just Do It, which I've taken, um, you know, had a refresh uh, back in the summer, first break in like seven years. And what I'm really interested in doing is is like this, more in-person interviews, more singing or dancing, you know, lights, camera, action, and, you know, trying to have a real go at YouTube. Um, having, you know, had a lot of success in the audio space with that, which led me to launch my podcast agency, Podpreneur. So, um, Working on um, the agency again, we've just um, passed year four okay, um, and just signed up um, some really interesting clients that I'm very excited to work with. So those are like the two two main things um, that my podcast is my passion. Um, my second best thing is helping other people do the same thing. Um, and then I'm deliberating in my mind whether to run the London Marathon or not, um, <laughs> having pulled out um back in march last year with about five different injuries so oh, that's like personal side of things yeah and are you are you a serial marathon runner i'm not i, I did I'm one of, I, I did this crazy thing during lockdown where i do you remember the the the, the nhs 5k challenge and yep. it was like run 5k pay five pounds to the nhs nominate five people so i did that and then the next weekend i was like do you know what i enjoyed that let's just double it let's do 10k then the weekend after that i did 10 miles then i did half a marathon and then i was like screw it let's do a marathon and my wife was telling the story the other day she was like he literally left the bedroom and went see you later i'm off to run a marathon and she was like on the phone to someone at the time you know going what the hell and it all you know it was a bit of a disaster in that um my i bought like a water pack that exploded after 10 miles, all cascading down the back of my legs. Oh, I'd literally put 10 jelly babies in my back pocket. <laughs> Those were soaking wet. Um, the sun was out. I hadn't even put a cap on this this head. Um, <laughs> hadn't put any sunscreen on. And um, I had to call them like halfway through. And next thing you know, there's my two daughters and my wife at the side of the road handing protein bars and bottles of water out. Brilliant. <laughs> but I did it. I completed it. And then... Um, People are like, why would you run a marathon when you don't get a medal? I only, you know, people go, I only run marathons to get collect medals. So um, this time last year, pretty much, I ran um, the New York Marathon. Okay. I did get a medal. 
um, oh. and then and then I was like, um, because I got in, friend um, actually flies the private jet for the owner um, that sponsors the New York Marathon, and he also sponsored London. So he literally said, mm. "Why don't you run London next year?" And I was like, uh, "I wasn't planning on running anymore, <laughs> but now you kind of planted that seed in my head." <laughs> That's funny, and that's the epitome of the screw it, just do it moment. When you, you know, so you just went and did it, and, yeah, and, and now the next time your your preparations yeah. might be a bit different. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah. but it worked out in the end, and yeah. So I I, I like to have you know business goals and then like personal goals and like physical and mental at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we, I don't know what you're like, but when yeah. everything's going in the right direction for me, I'm doing something physical mm. and training for as well as something mental. Yep. And that's kind of gone off the boil now. Okay. Um, having just seen a physio last week. So after trying to restart my training. Um, so yeah, yeah. That's, uh... So yeah, that, that, that holistic approach mm. um, is kind of an interesting one. Um, I mean, I was going to ask you, um, obviously with your, in your podcasting, you've done what, 529 episodes? Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, that's, a, that. that's a pretty yeah. amazing achievement. Um, do you see you do you see patterns? You know what what makes folks successful? Do you? I mean, does it? They must must rub off on you. Um, you'd like you'd like to think so, wouldn't you? Um, and I always remember um, very early on interviewing Lewis Howes, who's got you know one of the most successful podcasts oh, in, wow. in the world. And um, I remember actually that was the first podcast I recorded. I remember feeling nervous. That was the first one I actually okay. remember feeling nervous for. You know, even though it was just audio only at that time. And it's it taken me I think about nine months to get him anyway. Um, but I remember asking him a similar question and, and he was like, I like to take something from each interview that I can mm. implement. It's really nice. Um, or if I've tried to implement in, in the past and it, you know, I've failed to do so to, to try it, you know, again from another angle. Um, I can't remember who I spoke to recently, someone else. And they said, yeah, I actually write that down after, after the interview. Just one I kind thing. Of reflect back on it. Just write one thing. Yeah, down. that's nice. Mm. Because uh, you know it's like you could end up writing a whole bunch of things, but do you actually take any action on those bunch of things? No. Mm -hmm. If it's one thing, and maybe it's just, um, you know, reinforcing something that you're already trying to do mm -hmm. or want to do. Mm -hmm. Someone else has told you, you know, because mm -hmm. a lot of themes obviously mm -hmm. come up, you know, during those interviews. But I think I like that. I thought I, I, I should take a, a leaf out of his book and literally get a book. And, and literally start writing down this episode, this episode, write down so one, one thing, thing and reflect back on it, whether it's like every quarter or whatever, and see if you've, you've you know, you've kind of done a, done a James Clear and you've kind of stacked those different habits. Hmm. Hmm. Atomic habits. That's yeah. one. <laughs> Tried to get him as a, as a guest, but got No, off. no chance. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, of course. So do you have um? What, what's your process? What's your? Do you have like a specific process of approaching each episode, each season, um, planning that out, and how does it look like going from the con conception of it to like ex executing it? Yeah. So I mean, when I started it, there were there was you know when you say like five hundred episodes, it sounds it sounds crazy. But it, it, that was, does sound crazy. <laughs> it does. Okay, I, I, I think mean, we're I think we're number it fifty. Well. I think we're fifty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, and then that's the thing. You look at the stats, I, and I only found this out this year. I did a, an article on, on LinkedIn, and I kind of dived into it, and it was like um, 24 25% of people only ever release a show trailer. Yeah, they never even release episode one. And then it's 46% <laughs> of people never get to episode 11. So, oh, okay, okay. You know, I sort of say to my yeah, client, I was trying better, to yeah. say to him the yeah. other day, like, we're actually probably closer to the 1% than, like, exactly. <laughs> and and you, And then you go, well... I fancy my chances. If, if, <laughs> if half the people out there quit before they even get to the third month, mm. fourth month, you know, because they haven't got the staying power, they haven't got the persistence, mm -hmm. um, then I fancy my chances because I'll, I'll just keep going yeah. no matter what yeah. it is, you know, yeah. like a marathon or whatever. I'll yeah, just, yeah, yeah, I'll just yeah. keep going. So, um, when it, so I never thought that it would be, you know, a weekly show. At one point, you know, for, th for probably four years, it was twice a week, which in hindsight, yeah, that's a lot. I wish I hadn't, mm -hmm. you know, nearly killed me. But, mm. um, it's definitely a new process now mm. from from something I went to earlier this year um, that I took took the first break I'd ever had with a podcast and came back really refocused, re-energized and, and with a different plan, you mm. know, with a structure. Mm. Um, because I suppose you do anything for, for so long and I, I just thought I'm almost getting a little bit bored with some of the people I'm interviewing. Mm. Um, so you know, came up with a new structure, refreshed what I call like a dream 100 exercise. Like, you know, if, okay. as you mm -hmm. said, James, you know, you, you commit to doing this podcast for 10 years, 
Well, even if you take it year by year, but in 10 yeah. years, ultimately, who do you want to get on yeah. that podcast? Yeah. And, and for people starting out, I always say, have a, have a you know, a hundred day list as well, because if you want to start your podcast the next hundred days, you've got to reach yeah. out to those, you know, immediate connections, first connections are yours. But, right. but otherwise, yeah, for me, it's, it's have that dream 100 and then, you know, every quarter, keep checking it, keep reaching out to those people. And sometimes it's not still asking them to come on your podcast. It's giving them something of value or something right, of interest. Yeah. Or for me, it's usually just the way my, my mind works. I think of who I can connect them with and it's, undoubtedly someone I've met on the podcast and mm. straight away I think you need to speak to so and so I literally just did it on the train on the way up from from my last mm. guest as well mm. so it's yeah, good straight good. away yeah a connecting the dots I was going to ask you as well um like the the Alex Chisnell now you know 500 plus episodes in versus the Alex Chisnell when you started mm. how have you how's it impacted speaking to all these amazing people how's it impacted you have you seen any changes in your in yourself um yeah, can you talk good about question. that, actually? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. And and I think um, 100%, I don't think there's any way that, that you couldn't be impacted by that. Um, mm -hmm. And I, for me, it's it's been, it's 100%, the biggest takeaway from the whole thing has been the people that I've met, mm -hmm. the connections I've made, the friends I've made mm -hmm. who were mm -hmm. guests, yep. you know, and the opportunities that have come through that without yeah. seeking them, yep. just again, yep. someone thinking like me, you need to speak to, mm -hmm. to Alex, yeah. for example. Yeah, that's nice. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's impacted me in many, and, and even, you know, things like, for example, um, you know, running the marathon, swimming in the sea every day, which I do apart from today, because I got the early train. Um, but think okay. things like that wouldn't have come without having my podcast mm -hmm. and my eyes and ears being opened up to other possibilities, other ways of life, other, um, you know, personal development stuff. Like I never even looked at anything like that in my life before I'd heard of Tony Robbins and that was kind of it, but you know, mm -hmm. working on yourself and improving yourself without kind of getting too woo woo, but things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, being staying grounded, yeah, but staying just grounded, implementing absolutely. habits that will yeah. make your life better. Yeah. In yeah. Those incremental, Things that you can gains. do, yeah, yeah. yeah. incremental gains. Yeah, so so lots of things like that that my lot, even you know my how my average day, how my average week looks like now is completely and utterly different. I've never thought about that, but now you've said that things mm -hmm. like, you know, for example, Friday afternoon, finish early, play golf with my best friends. We nice. started that during lockdown, wow. and it just bookends the week. Kept it going. Kept it going mm. again every Friday. Nice. Um, you know, swimming in the sea every morning, running in the forest on a on a Saturday morning. None of those things I was doing before I had the podcast. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <There> <laughs> Thank you, you very much for that. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. It's good to it's a keeper. Yeah. It's always good to look back and Dan and I were talking the other day about um how I mean I it goes with saying, you know, comparison is a thief of joy and a lot of folks compare and it's a bit of a tangent really, but um compare themselves with folks that might be 10,000 steps ahead of them. So mm -hmm. there's no way to even relate to that person because yep. they're ahead. But actually, yep. it's like um, mm -hmm. if you can, you know, put in those incremental, those little good habits, whatever, over time, those compound. Um, mm. But you can't, ex you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, um, but it's... Uh, yeah. And I think um, like when, especially at first, you're really thinking about, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this. But then as you go along, you realize I, I need to go for a run on Saturdays. I need to, you know, play some golf every Friday, you know yeah. what I mean? So that you can come back in the new week and be like really fresh. And exactly. Really, yeah. yeah. A lot of it's self-awareness self too. I think, um, you know, with your journey with uh, Screw It, Just Do It, you know, you, you can't help but, like you said, you can't help but being influenced by <clears throat> these amazing people. And um, mm, some yeah. things, you know, some things, like, that's a keeper, I'll take that. Or, you know, it doesn't, because you can't, their journey is their journey. Your journey is your journey. Um, mm. But if it's just a natural evolution, that natural yeah. process, um, and you take things that work, and actually, by speaking to different from folks from, from, that have different journeys, um, you do become, you know, kind of a bit of a spotlight on yourself. Think, okay, you know, what do I want? You know, this guy yeah. seems to be happier than I am, or this girl <laughs> guy. It's like, yeah, and, and I can get a bit of what they have, you know. And also, it's, I don't know. you know. The, not everything is is going to work for you that that, that you implement, and it, and it doesn't guarantee success, obviously, mm -hmm, either. Mm -hmm. By going, okay, so these are the habits of that Elon has, so let's let's implement those. It doesn't guarantee success. You still got to, you know, it's a cliche, but you know, you still have to show up every day. You still have to put the work in, um, and it's that, 
you know, seven years later, you're still doing it, or ten years later, you're still doing it. As I kind of say to my my daughters, you know, it's it, it's it's not those who've got the most talent that that will succeed in life. That's something that I've learned mm-hmm. along the way because you, mm-hmm. you can see how many different, you know, just in the sporting arena, but it's going to be the same in the business arena. You know, you might have the most natural talent in the world, but if you're not prepared to, you know, ride the bumps in the road as they come to you, then you're going to be the first one to kind of pull the ripcord and yeah. jump off, aren't you? Yeah, wasn't it? Was it Carol Dweck, um, the Growth Mindset, that book? Um, mm, she talks book. about talent and, and I guess grit. Um, I don't know whether she used the word grit, but it's basically if you've got the stick withness, you know, talent will get you so far. Yeah. Um, but actually, and and actually, that's the, I think, um, generational. You know, I guess it's um, old school way of thinking is you know if you if you can't do things easily, then they're not for you. But actually, the real world is you got to put in the time to learn to kind of um, focus on that tenacity and that stick withness. Mm. And I think a lot of young folks these days, in fact, you know, every human, a lot of humans, they don't have that stick withness. Because they think they just try and rely on their talent, um, and then they get disheartened and they give up. And, and yeah. also, you know, as, as you say, you know, the the most obvious role models like back in the day, you 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 know, just see them on TV once in a blue moon or in in a magazine. Now it's there in front of your face twenty four seven. This version of their lives, mm-hmm. which we yep. all know isn't yep. the full mm-hmm. three sixty version of their lives, but if that's all you're seeing and that's being reinforced every day, then it probably does look relatively easy, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. To a lot of people. Yep. Podcasting as well, it's a long, it's a long game. <laughs> it's Absolutely. like, a, yeah, yeah. yeah, it yeah. Takes, uh, takes it's time consuming, it's expensive, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, it takes a lot of energy. Yeah. I mean, you know this better than we do. I yeah, mean, we, yeah. we, you know. It's, um, yeah. yeah, like like you say, like a lot of people want things, want things now, but then, yeah, especially because podcasting is growing as well. Mm-hmm. So everybody and their mom wants a podcast nowadays. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah, so um, I wanted to touch on a little bit just before this part. Uh, what came to my mind was like non-negotiables. Mm-hmm. Do you have any uh, non-negotiables? If so, what are they um, to help you, like, you know, push through and make sure that you, you get the job done because you have your goals? In life or, or both? Work? Because I I think what we're starting to find is that work life balance. It's yeah it's, yeah and I, and I, the same, it, yeah and I, and I don't think um, and again I think that was something that was first um, explained to me by by some of my guests. You know you just you know you you read a bunch of books. Yeah, work life balance, work life balance, and then actually, um, and I can't remember who it was, <laughs> but it was like you know I don't think there is a work life balance. I think there is in it different phases in your life. Right. You're going harder at this. Mm-hmm. And therefore, this has to take more of a back seat, yeah. and then you go harder at this, and this mm-hmm. takes a back yeah, seat. But yeah. but equally, and you know, you know, as James with, you know, have, having having kids, etc., is that you want to be there for them. You don't want to be that 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 dad that that isn't there. So therefore, um, you know, you you do make sacrifices, um, mm. and and you know, I was I was always the one who wanted to be there for for the sports days and. And you know, stars mm-hmm. of the week awards, and you kind of mm-hmm. look around. There's maybe only three other blokes there. It's really important. You know, so little things, and they mean yeah. so much. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. So for me, yeah, and, and I've definitely seen this. I don't think there is, you know, work-life balance. But for me, um, and it's it's that it comes back to that kind of habit stacking thing again for me. Like there's non-negotiables. It's like you you have yeah. to if you, if you say you're going to do something do it yeah I you know yeah. turn up and, it, and it's that thing the difference between the alarm going off and somebody hitting snooze or for me get up. and it's just reinforcing <laughs> it just get up and do it and it's that thing with getting out um getting in the sea in the morning and at the moment it's, it's, it's the worst time of year because it's the darkest time of year we go at 6 30 in the morning and i was like saying to the guys like this wasn't part of the deal. The going in the sea bit, I can cope with because it's cold. And we can cope with that. Now we've now added another bloody layer where it's pitch black. <laughs> can't even see where the sea is. Can't see what you're standing on to get to the sea. Whether it's sharp and pointy and mushy and horrible. Um, and even like last week when the temperature dropped here in the in the UK, the sand was frozen. I was like, yeah. I never even knew oh, sand froze. You wow. know. So bare feet. Bare feet. Bare yeah. feet. Sand. Frozen sand. Yeah. Frozen sand. No neoprene um the previous years we have and um it's just like you know someone again talking about cold water therapy and you know swimming and dipping in the sea they're like well look that's the hardest thing you do that day mm. and you know everything else in your day yeah, is gonna be easier there's why, nothing yeah. else that's gonna be harder than that other than you know some life-threatening 
things that mm-hmm. might happen and mm-hmm. might, may not happen to you. That's, That's really... why you can say screw it, just do it. Um, but yeah, other people will find it harder. I think. Um, yeah, I don't recommend have, it for everyone. Yeah, at all, but I mean to have at least a small. Um, version of that where it sort of pushes you out of your comfort zone I mean that's it even when you first if you were never someone who made your bed in the morning that's going to be a slightly uncomfortable thing that you have to do every morning and that's a, like a little win and yeah. then that would help you push you out of your comfort zone yeah and that's attention to detail isn't it again it's something I, I try to reinforce you know with my daughters and I was interviewing one of the, the SAS who dares wins guys last week and you know he used that example you know being in the military and being incredibly um, detail orientated and um, you know that commitment to mm. to doing what you said you're gonna do. So if you do that once, then you do it the next day, and do it yep. the next day, and do it the yeah. next day. Yeah. yeah. And and like you say, for me, I think it's and that was maybe a realization. I did something called seventy five hard that kind of led up to me doing that mm-hmm. marathon for the first time. But um, that that again was just pushing yourself, feeling uncomfort, and then going. Let's push a bit more, mm. push a bit more, mm-hmm. and then what comes out the other side is growth. Mm. But if mm-hmm. you're not prepared to push through that mm. uncomfortableness, mm. you'll never know what lies beyond that. Yeah. So for me, I think now I know, you know, every time you, you, you feel that something's uncomfortable, just to keep pushing, mm. as difficult as it, as it, as it might yeah, be. Yeah, as uncomfortable. And, and not yeah. to give up, because the, the, the natural human reaction is to hit the snooze, pull the duvet back over you, take the comfortable option. Especially right now. Especially right now. Right yeah, now. well, there's no, no, yeah, adversity does, yeah, it does make you grow. Um, and I, I often think as a parent, I've got three teenage daughters. Um, sounds like you've got, you've got one more couple, mate. Yeah, you've yeah. got a couple of daughters. Yeah, I mean, Teenagers. yeah, it's crazy. So you're, you're outnumbered as well. <laughs> totally outgunned, yeah. It's like, you know, as parents, are we equipping our children to struggle, mm. you know, because life is difficult. It's not easy. There's no shortcuts that I've seen. I think some folks might may, may have a head start, um, yeah. but it's still, you know, it's still tough. Um, and um, I, I've actually described this on an, another interview. I can't remember who, where it was, but it's this line where you have, you know, failure on one side and success on the other. And in the middle, you've got kind of mediocre. Yeah. Um, it could be on the failure side, it could be adversity. Um, but at least it brings a bit more, bit of color in your life, you know, when you're yeah. failing um, and you, le- you, know, you learn. Um, and then success is sweet, but you know where you don't really want to be. If you kind of coddle yourself and in the middle, because you don't grow, you don't get strong, no. you know. Uh, and I, who wants to be in the fucking middle, you know? <laughs> no, um, no, indeed. So, in fact, so um, so you actually studied journalism back in the day, didn't you? I did. Um, so you've always yeah. had a quite. An, so if we go back, right, to kind of what brought you to where you are now. Um, mm. So if you've always been. Have you always been an inquisitive, curious, curious individual? Um, can you talk a bit about? Kind of your upbringing, um, and then even, you know, you you had a, a pretty long career at Virgin Atlantic, and I, I know you met Richard. Yeah. A- anything you can kind yeah. of share with us, and that's obviously Tara. I think Tara's still flying, isn't she? She is. Saw um, something the other day, some destination that uh, they were they were starting. Nice and warm. Was, uh, yeah, was <laughs> South Africa, some vineyard nice somewhere. Warm, yeah. 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 So can you talk? Yeah, go back a little bit, um, and kind of give our listeners a kind of a feel for kind of where you came from and and some of your experiences. And actually, I'm I'm also interested this your time being um, a virgin, you know, you must have met a lot of people and a lot of experiences that, you know, so how did that shape you, you know? Yeah, it was, it was funny, actually. You know, all these documentaries have, have, have come out recently with a lot of these, you know, a- A-listers. And, um, and and it's funny when you reflect back, so I like, watched the, watch the, um, the Beckham one and I was like, and then I've got a David Beckham story. And then it's like, I ro- watched the Robbie Williams ones. I got a Robbie Williams story. And it's just like, I haven't got an Arnie. On a Schwarzenegger story, never met <laughs> okay, him. But okay, yeah, you yeah. kind of think back and you go like, wow, we, we really were privileged back in the day because you did an LA flight and every flight there was, you know, there was somebody on it, whether it's a, you know, it's a, whether it's a Tom Jones, who I met a number of times, whether it's, you know, Stereophonics, whether it's Adam Ant going back really back far in the day. Um, and, and then, you know, the whole Man United team on, on a flight with, with David Beckham. Um, Robbie Williams taking him out, you know, on on, on a flight, and you, then you watch the documentaries, and you're like, you forget how big these people were back in the day, right. like globally, mm-hmm. you know, everywhere they went, they were hounded by the press, and it was kind yeah. of reinforced. Then we saw the Diana <laughs> crown. I watched some of that with my wife, and I was just like, like, it's it's on that, it's on that kind of a level for these, for these people. Um, so yeah, look for me, 
if you spoke to my mum, she would say, yeah, I was definitely uh, curious as a kid. And I always say, I kind of feel I've come full circle because I, I went from, um, you know, y university in Bath to BBC mm -hmm. Radio Wales in Cardiff. Okay, okay, I didn't um, know that. Yeah, because that's where I was, I was, I was brought up. My, my father's Canadian, my mum's mm. Welsh, oh. um, and they split up when I was about eight or nine. Okay. Um, living in a little village called Wargrove near Henley, originally in Buckinghamshire, um, and they split up. So, you know, mum moved back, father went back to Canada, etc. Okay. So, um, kind of feel a come full circle because, you know, joining the BBC and then getting a real grounding and following one of the news hounds around and like first interviews like Lennox Lewis, second okay. was Neil Kinnock, which for those who remember back yeah, in the day, he was, he, big, yeah. he, he was um, you know, Margaret Thatcher was the prime minister and he was, you know, um, big in charge of the other party yeah. Yeah, and a big personality. Yeah. Um, so, so it's interesting now to, you know, you, know, you kind of think, I wonder what would happened if I'd stayed at the BBC. And you're like, well, you never would have experienced all this other stuff. Life, like, life, <laughs> and, and and you know, Virgin was was an unbelievable um, education. Um, and you know, back in the day, used to see Richard a lot. Um, you, you know, Ben, remember you know having a room party in LA with him one time. I remember going, you know, going to a nightclub in in South Africa for when they launched Virgin Coke, like one of his mm -hmm. failures, Virgin Coca Cola, mm -hmm. um, and. I kind of looked back and thought, I wish I'd actually asked him some decent questions rather than just enjoying the free champagne. But, you know, 20 odd years old, you know, um, you know, Richard and, and lots of female cabin crew, you're just enjoying yourself, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I wasn't business orientated then, but that definitely must have rubbed off. Got the bug somehow, or isn't must it? Have. Well, yeah, yeah, must have, yeah. Because I spent, I spent my last few years at Virgin like not going out, not partying, not seeing the sights. And yes, part of that was had our first child, yep. got married, you know, you're in a different zone. But that was working on business ideas. That was literally being in a laptop, just staying in my hotel room and, and you know, brainstorming and researching it's different, like, what's different next? ideas. Yeah, and it was, it was kind of preparing myself, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, you know, you just see less and less of him as he moved to live on a Caribbean island mm -hmm. and not be living. But he'd still, you know, every year there would be a party at his house in Killington in, in Oxford. And you yep. just like bring your tent and party for a couple of nights. And those I've actually, I've actually been to one. I've been have to a couple you? because have my you? father, um, I think that's yes, what we talked about. Said. He yeah. used to work for Virgin, one of the, you know, early. We employees. were probably at the same one at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably. Actually. Do you, do you know Alison Bonney? I think she was Richard's PA's PA. Oh, okay. So she was PA to Saskia oh, Kitchen, okay. who, uh, who who I think I met one of the parties. Right. Um, but Alison used to get us into lots of um, <laughs> great parties in London. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jamira Kawai was there at the last one. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, th yeah, it's kind of interesting. Hey? So um, okay, so um, so that journalist, so that was already in your blood, and you already worked in that role. Um, yeah. You had a bit of life experience. You met your your wife, um, yeah. and you've got a family now. So how do you, um, as far as, I know we, we touched on the, the work-life balance thing. Um, as far as, um, yeah, do, as far as managing your time between your family and, and work and everything else, um, can you comment on that? Is it just, um, do you, in fact, I think on your interview with Dan Serta, I think they talked about it's just life, you know, you just have to, and it's your priorities, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and you know, my wife, works for herself, she has her own business as well. So um, it'll be interesting, you know, in years to come, what the kids kind of picked up on that mm -hmm. and what, what they kind of learned from that. Because we were just having a parents evening the other day and um, chatting to the business studies teacher and like explaining to her, we both work for ourselves and she was just like, that. oh, that's really good. You should, you should kind of talk about that more at home because she shows a real aptitude for, mm -hmm. for business studies. Okay. And I was saying, well, I just hosted an event last week with, um, with uh, Jim Cregan, founder of Jimmy's Ice Coffee, he's just mm. sold a Britvic, and she was like, "Oh, that was you, was it? I saw that all over LinkedIn." She goes, I "Didn't know that was one of my, <laughs> you know, one of my people's fathers." And she goes, "We actually did it, with, did a case study on his business." Oh, really? Oh, so interesting. I was like, "Oh, thank you." I said, "She came to the event. She saw it. She met Jimmy, etc." So, um, I'm sure all that kind of stuff rubs off. You know, it mm. must do. It must do. Um, and for me, yeah, I throw myself in, in, into all of it as a, as a kind of. Uh, mentioned before, like attending as much of a can as much as I can. Um, I do still do you know all the morning school runs when okay, I can. Yeah, nice. Two two evenings in the week. Um, again Saturday morning, taking my youngest out to horse riding in the New Forest. And again, you kind of learn how to maximise that time for mm -hmm. yourself. And the thing that I don't like with not having boys is that you can't go and then watch them 
like my mum just stood there in all kinds of weather in Wales watching me play every rugby game at the side okay. of the pitch okay. with horse riding or dancing which my other one has gone now gone on to uh, performing arts college you can't watch either of those disciplines mm-hmm. dancing once a year or well, yeah, one, yeah, exactly. dance, once yeah, that, a year yeah. literally once for the show yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. for me it's like okay how do I maximise my time okay why don't I do my long training ones? I've got 90 minutes let's go you know I'm in my kit already in the car um, and just maximise that time that's nice um, it's being, yeah being present isn't it yeah, um, and, and then also, you know, as, as I say, making sure that I've, you know, it's something I've tried to implement more and more the last few years. And I think that's, again, one of those lockdown lessons that maybe we've all taken is, you know, that time for reflection and going, you know, what do I, what do I love doing? Okay, I love snowboarding, I love running, I love playing golf, da 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 And you go, okay, I play golf twice a year, haven't snowboarded for three years. Um, mm. all of these things mm. and then I'm like right I'm not having it anymore I'm not no. having it anymore so it was like we're going skiing you know and, and at that time um, I was in another business that was you know wasn't doing so well was mm-hmm. failing how are you going to make this happen I'm going to make it happen Ma- you know made it happen um, the golf is now like a twice a year holiday with my old uni friends that we you know go mm-hmm. away mm-hmm. For, for two nights and I, for me you know and then the Friday afternoon for me all of that is massively important because it's I think otherwise you lose your own identity, yep. especially bringing up kids and, you know, I know what you're like, but you do anything for your kids. So as I say, you're, you're, you're making all these sacrifices with your time. And then it gets to a point where you go, actually, I want to get some of me time back again. I need to yep. do stuff for it's me. Important. Yeah. I, I learned recently um, the, the heart is the most selfish organ in the body because it takes all the oxygen first mm. but if you think about it if it doesn't do that then it's not going to put oxygen to anywhere else in the body and you die yeah so actually by taking that um that idea that actually the heart is the most selfish organ in the body you know you've got to give yourself fill yourself up yeah make yourself strong and then you'll be in you're in a much stronger um position to to yeah. give to your family and friends and loved ones and yeah. and your business or whatever it is um yeah. and um I've, I've been doing a bit of that lately last yeah. couple of years and it's been an incredible transformation for me just you know it's similar nice. to you i jump in a cold pond every morning Dear, um, brilliant. and uh it's not the sea i don't live that uh, 20 miles away from the sea <laughs> but um it's just spending that time in the morning you know early yeah. um yeah and then and then naturally th- things you seem to attract different things into your life if yes. you can actually yeah, yeah be your show up as your best mm. um then you've got far more to give um and it's not yeah, forced like or yeah that's no mm. that, that, thanks for sharing that so i think um so it's, I think the takeaway that, so from what you just said, it's um, you're, you're, you're being intentional. Um, was there a pivotal moment where you said enough, I need to change? Or was that over time? That's a really good question. Um, and without, yeah, really delving back, I, I think it was definitely, um, it was definitely locked down mm-hmm. for me. And it was like, you know, affected so many people. It was like literally every client disappearing over the next 30 days until we had one client left that was that was paying me um and just Mm re-evaluating what was important what what you enjoyed doing etc um so Mm. it was probably both sudden and gradual in a way in that you know that 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 moment that that forced forced us all to stop take a back seat um and actually work out you know what what was actually you know, what was precious, what was worthwhile, what you wanted to spend your time doing, how you wanted to, you know, reshape your, your life at that time, I think. So, yeah, def- definitely for me, that, that that was a huge one. I mean, I ended up with that, with that, with that one client doing over 200 webinars in one year. It was like a piv- pivot again, you know, we're doing podcasts and at live events and it was like, there are no live events. <laughs> everyone's furloughed their marketing department so there are no new clients to to, to have because you can't have a conversation with anybody it was literally that that desperate and this one client well let's pivot from live events to online alex you can host them all okay i didn't didn't plan on doing four or five a day every day well yeah that's but that's what we did yeah Yeah. you know it was brutal but you know i think after that um I really thought, you know, and I'm going to, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm just going through a very similar phase at the moment um, with with my business in my life. What do I actually enjoy doing? Because mm-hmm. all of a sudden, again, before you realize it, 
I don't know what you're like, but you find yourself in the weeds of the business and in the minutiae and you're like, am I really serving the business and myself by mm -hmm. doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, we, we spend so much time, I think, um, looking inwards that we need to zoom out. And I'm definitely, I'm looking forward to, you know, break Christmas, New Year to, to fully zoom mm -hmm. out. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and for me, I'm, yeah, I'm very lucky to be going off snowboarding for a couple of days with a friend who's just got a ski chalet, and that will give nice. me the time. To, that kind of reset, yeah, probably on the mountain, and yeah, yeah sounds good. And then I'm like, no more, you know, work mode is is done. When'd you um, go? Thursday. Three days. <laughs> oh, nice, excellent. Yeah. So yeah. it's a, the last little push. Last little push. Last little push. That's good. Yeah. So it it is interesting that that you know those times, and I think we almost need to force ourselves to do it. I think taking the break. So how long? How long did you break the? Uh, you know, with for the podcast. How long did you actually take a break for? Yeah, the the plan was like a couple of weeks, maybe a month max, yeah. and it ended up being uh, finished May. Next podcast was October the eleventh. Okay, so okay. But during that time, I was filming episodes, mm -hmm. so we, okay, we yeah. launched. I already had maybe eight, nine, ten. Okay, okay, in, in the bank. Yeah, yeah okay. so maybe it was just a couple of months from. Fit, okay. But, but literally six days after I said I was finishing, I was literally itchy, itchy to get back. To get back, I was <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, what, yeah. "What do we? I need to think. I need to plan. I need to need to do the guest list. I need to." Yeah, yeah. yeah it's mad. Do you have like a set amount of of episodes that you feel comfortable with? Because you you mentioned before that mm. another person is six months yeah. and you are sort of three months, and then what, yeah. what do you find is sort of the sweet spot for? Yeah, for me, it and and I guess it's the the level of maybe control uh, that, that you that you want and for me it, yeah it's definitely it, it's around you know six to 12 weeks mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. the best i ever had was like three months 12 12 episodes and i felt super relaxed and, okay and yeah. then it's like treating it as a project as i tried to say to clients I was like, if you treat it as a project next 100 days um once that's done, and that was from someone I interviewed, funnily enough. So there you go. I learned a lesson there. Yeah, Chris yeah, Ducker yeah. Okay. Uh, from Upreneur, yeah. um, who I've interviewed, I think, three times. Plug for Chris. <laughs> Chris is great. Chris is great. Um, and it was that him saying, you know, and I think it was this time of year, he was like, right, I've got all my content recorded, January, February, March. And I kind of went, huh? <laughs> it's December. He was like, yeah, don't have to worry about it now. But then wow. in January, mm -hmm. I'll record um, April, May, June. He goes, I just treat it as another project, like we're doing a website build, like we're doing yep, a yep. mastermind, you know, whatever it is, whatever new product service, treat it like that. And I was like, I really like that. Whereas I think, as we mentioned before, if it is like six months plus, like I know someone else does, for me, I'm thinking that's too much, too much to think about. The world almost. changes a lot too. Yeah. Doesn't Are it? you current enough? You know, because yeah. I, you know, mm. I think um, yeah. I have a question for you because clearly some interviews hit the mark and others don't mm. and it might be because i mean we talked earlier about you know some guests there might be a long monologue and it's like how can yeah. you get a because obviously they're really they're really opening up mm. and actually one, one side is they're actually really opening up and they probably never true. talked about this before it's almost like a therapy session yeah um so you don't want to interrupt but then some interviews just are just great and they're they that's what you want you know um do you feel compelled to publish them all or do you, I mean, because, yeah. because, you know, again, I've, I've been like, Good question. I've been struggling with this because you yeah. don't, you know, yeah. as human beings, we are all equal and you might have, well, mm -hmm. you can always learn from anyone. Um, so what do you do anyway? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't have yeah, the answer. So, so here you go. This, <laughs> so what this, do you do? This is a really good question. <laughs> and, and it was literally 12 months ago, I was having this conversation with somebody I was working with on like repositioning, rebranding my business, Popreneur. Mm -hmm. And um, I had, I think it was three interviews in a row. And I got comfortable during, during lockdown. Somebody was giving me, um, had, a podcast, had a podcast speaker agency, and they were just giving me people to interview. And okay. to start okay. with, the people they gave me were amazing. Okay, Like amazing. triple A-list, okay. the American. Yeah. And then by the end of it, I was just recorded these three interviews, and I was chatting to this lady, Lucy, and I was like, I'm not really happy with any of them. And she's like, don't put them out then. And I went, what do you mean? She's like, well, don't publish them. And I was like, don't publish them. I said, yeah, you've been doing this nearly seven, nearly six years at the time. This is your brand. If you're not happy with what you're putting out there, 
in the public domain. This reflects on you. It reflects on the screw it. Just do it. Brand. And then why would you put it out there? And I just said, okay. And it was these three interviews, you know, no offense to anybody who's listening who's American, but there were three Americans um, and they were using it as an opportunity as to sell their thing. Sales pitch, yeah. Okay. One of them was even waving a book around as I was interviewing him. And that was, <laughs> I think that was the moment on okay. the last one. And the whole studio was branded for his book that I was interviewing him, you know, online in, in LA or whatever. And then he picks up the book and starts waving it around, go to, da, da, da. And I just thought, nah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay, okay. No. Okay. So, so that was it. That was the decision. Didn't put any of them out, which left me in a little bit of a hole because I literally had, I think, one episode. I had like four recorded mm -hmm. and there was only mm -hmm. one I was happy to put out. Okay. And it made me kind of and there's always something you can do i think i put i did a couple of solo episodes over christmas and new year instead of like a highlights reel of you know we started doing like a top 10 most listened to episodes of the last year you know so you can always come up with something yeah but yeah, at the yeah, time yeah, i yeah. thought what she said rang true it really did it's your okay. brand yeah 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 if you're not yeah, happy with it yeah. don't put it out there yeah i think uh these are really important questions <laughs> because uh <laughs> everyone has their own system the way that they do things and podcasts specifically as well is like so specific to the brand because I, I i shared one with you where they're like it's a whole team this is a whole operation going on but then literally a couple of days later actually i watched another one who's arguably just as big but then he was like oh it's only me and another guy and do it and but then you're all pumping out like the same amount and you've you've got all the this backlog and stuff so i mean um, do you have any specific advice? Because nowadays it's even easier to put out a podcast and it's all marketed as that, you know, you can do it yourself actually, and, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, but then you hear, oh, but I should have like three months of, of content worth. And then who's doing the marketing and then who's doing yeah. the, the copywriting and stuff like that. So like, so for screw it, let's do it. Um, when you started out, what, what did it look like? What did your team mm. look like? And then now, it, especially in today's age, how we do it, like, mm. have you adjusted to that? Um, you know, like, what, what does your team look like now? And how is the whole operation running for Screw It, Let's Do It? Yeah. And, and look, for me to start with, it was just me, you know, and I learned how to do everything. Um, but the, fir the first tower I think everybody should do is to, is, is to hire somebody to do the thing that you don't like doing, yeah. you know, and, and it's whether you're one of those people who wants to do everything. So you learn how to do everything. So when it comes to recruit that person, you mm -hmm. know how much time should be spent kind yep. of doing those roles or whether you're just that person who wants to hire in the best people to do everything else. I was chatting to former guest of my show, Jay Morton, um, another SAS who dares wins guys went out for lunch with him Friday and he was just like, I just want to rock up and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. And I was like, me too. That's all I want to do <laughs> yeah. now. You know, I used to do, and I also, I'm, I'm quite happy to do um, some of the guests outreach for those, and, and it makes sense if you've got the connection, why wouldn't you reach out? Because it's easier to make that happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I also still like, you know, reviewing biographies, script, and, and kind of writing my own questions because we got to the stage where mine were being scripted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, I really wanted to put my own kind of stuff stamp on that really as yeah. well so so now i'm lucky in that i have a podcast agency i have everybody that i would need to yeah. do my podcast for yeah. me yeah. um but i'm still very i'm still probably too hands-on uh, mm. but there went a time mm. where i went completely hands-off and i think the quality mm. went down so i've kind of come back in with this kind of refresh that we've had mm. and we're still tweaking it it's still not mm -hmm. where i want it to be and especially having just launched a youtube channel mm you know, still working out after just seven, eight weeks, mm -hmm. um, you know, what works, what doesn't work. Um, yeah. and, and it's crazy, you know, how, how different you, you put something out and you'll get, you know, 20 people watch it, put something out. It was literally Friday, woke up Saturday, and two and a half thousand people had watched mm -hmm. it. And you're like, okay, so what made that one yeah. spike? Yeah. Is it the trending or, or who knows? What is it? Yeah. Always know. Sometimes you can't even tell. And I think it could be exactly. one person. Even might be one person watch it. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit of the, yeah. yeah. People knows? say that sometimes you just don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I am going to spend that time of to course, kind of go yeah. under the hood and yeah. actually figure out. It's, it's a, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. I was just saying that's, that's literally what I'm going to yeah. do. Figure out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's almost like um, you just have to do what feels right for you. Yeah. Show up as yeah. your authentic. Mm -hmm self or authentic whatever the brand stands for and just um mm -hmm. you know because again if you i mean you can learn from others 
but just because it worked for them, it doesn't mean to say it's going to work for you. Exactly. You need to come up with your own unique, yeah. you know, are you hitting the mark? You know, I mean, I guess it, the um, your listeners kind of dictate, I mean, you know, we're still trying to figure out, we, we, you know, if we're building it like, like we're, while we're flying it. It sounds like, you know, there's an element of you're still doing the same thing. You, Absolutely. you can always learn, um, you know, even moving from audio to film is quite a big, That's big massive. step, isn't it? It's massive. a different level of investment yeah. and every, all the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm and just, then, sorry. I mean, I just really quickly as well, and then going from from doing that because you know running a podcast that's that's a whole mission in itself, and then going from mm -hmm. doing that to doing podpreneur, starting a whole agency to help other people do that. Like, what was that process like? Because that's like a whole jump in itself as well. Um, so were there even feelings like, oh, am I ready to do it? But then there's the opportunity, you know? Yeah, and it, it it's an interesting. I'm I'm kind of. I'm still kind of fighting with it um, t to a certain degree um, <laughs> in that it seemed really natural at the time um, in that I went from people asking me, you know, and what I did basically 2000, to kind of frame it, in 2019 in January when I'm going to make it my goal to get my podcast to number one in the UK. Mm -hmm. Did that within six months when uh, the, the episode I recorded with uh, the founder of Huel, Julian Hearn, mm. that went to number one. And then the next week, James Haskell, formerly in the rugby, that went to number one. And then da-da-da-da. For you know, by the end of the year, it's been like number one in like 10 different countries. And, and that, you know, whether that's a barometer of success for some people or not, doesn't yeah, really fantastic. matter. It's the fact that I set myself a goal, I and did it. And you did it. And yeah. then other people <laughs> then started saying, okay, so I want to launch a podcast. Can you help Can me? You help me? Yeah. So then I was like, okay, <coughs> let's put together... Um, you know, some kind of workshop, masterclass, etc. So that's what I did. I did. I did a couple of them. Uh, people came, um, and off the back of that, that just got me thinking. You know, kind of reflecting backward, and that got me thinking. Okay, well, if I'm teaching people how to do it, why don't we just mm. take the next step? Mm. Which seemed obvious at the time, but now I'm kind of reflecting back on it. That maybe it isn't <laughs> to actually do it all for them. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and now it's interesting. I've been, you know approached and I'm working with a few different people more as a consultant so mm -hmm. people who've already got the content teams to video yeah. um, record the audio but they don't know podcasts mm -hmm. you know they know how to record a piece of content but then what do you do mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I'm really enjoying just talking about it mm -hmm. and getting them to implement rather and, and I, I, I notice like my energy comes up yeah, and I'm more kind of animated talking yeah. about it, and I'm more rather than yeah. overseeing the whole thing. And my video editor, my audio editor, my graphic designer, my head of ops, all of that. And yeah, it's a bit of a battle at the moment in in my head, really, as to okay, so and, it, and I suppose it's the same with every business, isn't it? With a lot of businesses, it's like okay, so how do you make this more effective? Mm. Um, have you gone down the the right route? Do you need to bring it back and go a little bit more down this route? So. Um, yeah, it's something that I'm going to use this reflecting time that I was talking about. To, yeah, to, trying to, to figure to it think out. On. Yeah, because yeah, you've got to think about revenue streams <clears throat> and whether you treat them as a separate business or whether they're, I mean, yeah. it's, you've got to make money so you can do more good stuff, right? So exactly. if you're profitable, you can put more great content out there. Um, yeah. But how do you get from obviously startup to actual revenue generating? Mm. Um, and I guess you've got to find those if you're looking for sponsors, you know, do they align with your vision, you know? Do they believe in you? Um, will I, will they take a punt when you might not have the the you know, the viewing numbers that you you might have? You know, because they yeah. in a way they have to be quite innovative. They're innovators themselves, um, yeah. and then once you kind of proven it, then you might have a d different set of sponsors that you know more yeah. kind of mainstream. Yeah, and they've, and, they, and they've they've got to be complementary. And and look, for for most people, I think that that I speak to, like we make a lot of branded podcasts for you know for different brands. It's like we want to be known as the authority in this space, for example. I don't know hosting websites, for, for you know for for example. Um, and yet they'll go and and I know, or you know, name any names, but somebody that um, I interviewed had a podcast, and she's got a hundred million dollar beauty business. She was doing having having sponsors on a podcast for like pampers for like diapers mm. or whatever you want to call them for babies and mm. i'm like what are you doing <laughs> this, this is yeah, I, you, she's like but my podcast needs to make money i was like yeah we just need to talk about the industry that you're in and yeah. interview people in the industry yeah. you're in because that yeah. will reflect on the beauty company and that will generate yeah. revenue for the beauty company you know you, you're completely not aligned not yeah not aligned. aligned at all i'm like and for most businesses it's it's just that for me the opportunity is where you would normally have 
you know, a pre-roll, a mid-roll, and a post-roll, three places where you put an ad for your podcast. You want to be using that to talk about your own products and yeah. services in a non-salesy way. There's yeah. different ways of doing it. You don't have to beat yeah. someone over the head with a yeah. sales yeah. message, you know. And 99% mm. of people I speak to just are automatically thinking sponsors about the money yeah about it's almost like, yeah and you yeah it, it is a it is a factor but it's uh it, it can is. corrupt you and, and it can actually that's very short short term it, I was, exactly what i was going to say if it's you've not got long that long-term term view yeah and you and you, you, and you you can afford to take the time to develop that podcast and build that community and you know you're drip feeding that message in then you are going to attract more of those dream listeners who become dream customers who ultimately become customers, paying customers in the business. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's, it's playing the long game, 100%. Yeah. So we're, we're actually coming to the end of our time together. Um, sadly, we're, we're going to kind of talk all day. Yeah. Um, a couple of quick fire questions. Um, I'm, is there any, I mean, obviously the guests that you, I know you've done so many, but can you comment on any guests that kind of perhaps gave you the most energy? Um, so when you finished the podcast interview, you felt the most energized? Mm. Um. Yeah, yeah, and there, there, there's, I, I can see that my, myself. Like when I and I don't watch them, I've never listened back to them. But now I've gone to the YouTube side of things. I'll actually watch the clips, you know, and you can mm. just see the the energy is different when I'm doing it. And for me, I can definitely see going back to a conversation we were having earlier. It, it's those who've got that element of adventure, or um, athleticism sports related that clearly fires something up inside of me with a lot of my mm -hmm. past so so for example people that i've interviewed like i would say alex good saracens uh and england rugby fullback uh jay morton which funnily enough is the most popular episode spotify put it up the other day going it's, it's the most popular episode that we've got it's 999 percent more popular than any other episode i was like yeah. whoa Mm -hmm. you know and, and he's yeah. become a friend we, we went okay. on monday we went in the sea for a dip together friday we had lunch nice. together so things like that it's a really good question actually james but that that clearly energized me but at the same time that's reflected in the demographic that's listened to the podcast mm -hmm. okay which is interesting yeah and it's just important that energy is, i mean you can't obviously mm -hmm. I, I was it's more of a personal thing questions you know you know uh, as far as that that feeling of like just excitement um, yeah and um and yeah. Is there any, um, in fact, do you have any other? Yeah, uh, yeah, questions? I mean, we, uh, so um, accepting sponsors that are not the right fit necessarily for you, I'd say as well, like even ex uh, like bringing on guests that don't fit with your podcast. Mm. Yeah. Any other sort of common, I don't want to say like mistakes, but sort of like learning curves that show up in a lot of these podcasts that start out that come to you? at podpreneur or even screw it let's do it like yeah that yep. that people can hear straight away now and be like okay not going to do that I, I think it's um and, and again this just develops over time i think it's having um say 10 questions 20 questions you're going to ask your guest and literally just going one two three four five six seven rather than asking the question mm -hmm. getting the answer yeah, yeah you're processing i was having this conversation with Staz from through dark and SESU Des wins last week and he's going I, I could never do this because I'd never be able to um, absorb the information my guest is giving to me and then come up with a question that's not on the list to go okay mm -hmm. so how did that make you mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. what did you do next yeah rather than just going question three da -da 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 -da. Yeah. Yeah. you know that that's I see all the time especially with people that we're, we're helping launch a podcast that that that's a common one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think another one would be talking too much about yourself to start with mm -hmm. and not letting the guest speak because mm -hmm. to start with you know nobody knows in theory um yeah. who you are but mm -hmm. they might know who your who your guests are there they, they might not be famous but they could be real thought leaders in their space yeah. they're experts that you're getting on they want to listen to them over time your audience will want to know more about you yeah and it's 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 you know, almost hilarious how you, you then start getting, you know, communications from your guests who like know things like about your mum and your brother and <laughs> yeah, your yeah. wife. They kind of get to know you, yeah. And what I got up to at the weekend. Yeah, you know, how was your trail run in the yeah. forest at the weekend? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks. You know, things yeah, like that. Yeah. So I think, yeah, that's just two kind of ones that I think starting out that um, you just kind of need to, and it's difficult because you go at it at a hundred miles an hour, but you just kind of need to learn to 
to relax, be comfortable in your own skin. And it's easy to say when you've got lights, you've got cameras, and you you might not be used to that kind of an environment, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So. so final thing, final question. Um, is there any advice you want to leave our listeners? Um, any any final thought um, for those listeners that might be looking to start something? What would you, um, any advice you leave them? And also, th- and then finally, you know, how do we find you? Um, yeah, I think I think probably the last thing I, I would leave is you know something I was I was researching last night um, with, with the guests that I got coming up on my show, and, and and that's just to get started. You know, stop procrastinating. Um, if you want to get from where you currently are in your life to where you want to be, you'll need to take some action in whatever shape or form. Um, there will be a whole bunch of actions that you need to take, whether it's starting a business, launching a podcast summiting Everest whatever it might be that happens to be my next guest today (laughs) but within all those actions what is the big domino that if you did that first action that's going to make all of those other dominoes fall over so one action that makes all of those Mm. other actions easier there will be something in there is it a phone call Um, is it an email Um, is it inviting somebody out for a coffee is it researching something on the internet whatever it is there will be something in there Mm. that makes everything else easier Okay. and for me I think it, it is that get started stop putting obstacles in your own way um screw it just do it screw it just do it fantastic <laughs> so how do, how do folks find you yeah pretty pretty easy with my name if you, if you just google alex chisnell that's my handle on on all social media apart from i think instagram is alex Chis- at alex chisnell underscore my podcast screw it just do it is the most most obvious way um you know take a listen to that let me know what you think about that and then Poprina, um is the website for the business Fantastic. Well, it's been wonderful having you here, Alex. Pleasure. It's been a Glad great did sport. It, and um, thanks, thanks for getting much. here early. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank it. So much, Thank you, yeah. both. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Rocket Pod with Alex. When you get a moment, we'd love it if you could jump over to um, whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on and leave a quick review. Um, it helps guide and inspire us to pick more guests like Alex to help you on your journey. Yeah, and for me, it was really nice to see that regardless of what someone's achieved or what they're doing, we're all actually a lot more similar than we think. The the way that Alex goes about his processes and and how he shared how he felt about needing to take that break so that he could come back more clear-minded and stuff like that. I think we overthink sometimes how much we should be really full on and just going at it and we need to create this thing. And yes, that is true if you want to build something, but also at the same time, remember that you're still human (laughs) <laughs> and mm-hmm. we all have lives outside of work as well so if you need to take that break take that break yeah and i think alex uh, well he jumps into the the sea every morning um has got some yeah. really good habits um but yeah I, I agree with that that's that's interesting i think that the world's also changing so fast and even for those that know what they're doing it's still challenging um to you know to really carve uh, a unique product um, and, um, you know, not always be comparing. I think we talked about how some of these mainstream podcasts now, you know, have, you know, six months of content. I don't know whether that right, was a conversation right. we had after yeah. on, on film or not, but, yeah. um, you know, and it's like, uh, you can't compare, you know, you, you've got to basically just do what you can with your mm. resources. And, and if you believe in it, then just keep, keep doing it. Um, but having a, having a break and having a breather and yeah. um, to come back more refocused and more energized, I think is also a good lesson as well. So mm-hmm. No, thank you, Alex, for your time and graciousness today. It was really fun um, yeah. turning the camera on you for change. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely check out his podcast. Check out what he's doing. Give him a follow. Uh, remember to subscribe to Rocket Pod. Leave us a comment what your thoughts are and follow us online so that you never miss a beat. Thank you and have a great week ahead. We'll see you in the next one.